my mum kicked the doors in of the, of the <laughs> and like <laughs> came in and uh, saved me. She was very fearsome and yeah. Uh, yeah, she was like foul. She was effing and blinding and she grabbed like she was then mad at me for some reason. Uh, but yeah, I got hauled out by my elbows and it was it was a real thing. But I think it's absolutely put me off custard and teachers. <laughs> The Graham Norton Radio Show on Virgin Radio. It's a proper read. I mean, I think yeah. cookbook will make people think it's recipes. It's not. Re- <laughs> no. it, I mean, they're in there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'd say from a legal standpoint, don't try any of the recipes. <laughs> I mean, you will per- One of you will perish. Yeah. The Mary Berry <laughs> domestic science teacher has not okay. This yeah, book. she has not. Okay. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted it to be fun and also kind of heartfelt. And, you know, I think there's a thing there in terms of I don't have my parents anymore, but the, I have things that they used to cook for us yeah. and they taste exactly the same when I do it. So, you know, it, it, in as much as I can make, not make my children eat those things, but they <laughs> love those things too. And it's like, well, you will know my parents through that in, yeah. a, in a way, you know. Um, you speak or write so beautifully about being a parent like i'm right. not a, i'm not a dad but i've always imagined if i was a dad i'd feel the way you talk in the book <laughs> yeah. whereas parents don't really confess right. about how hard it is yeah it is hard and and i'm not great at it all the time and i think it's it's i think it's it's all right to fail it's all right you know and i often say to my own kids look i'm, I'm just not that good at this right now i've never I heard someone say it the other day, which was a really nice way of putting it, saying to your kids, I've never done this before, you know, <laughs> bear with me, you know. Uh, and I'm fortunate that I've got a 12-year-old as well, so he, he he's the real messed up one, and then the others will be slightly less messed up as I refine my fathering. OK, very good. No, I, I love that thing you say about, you know, you want your kids to be happy all the time, but then you've got to punish them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I hate to. I mean, I'm not a big punisher anyway. I'm kind of a, especially with my older boy, I'm just like, I'm never sure it works. And I never want to be that guy. You know, if I can just kind of sit, we sit in the car and I have a little word or we talk about, hey, this is what I did. And this is how I messed up. And you know, I, I think it's more tangible for them to think, all right, well... And is cooking and feeding, is that your job or are they getting involved now? Do they Have they found a love of it? No, I hate them being in the kitchen because, I, <laughs> you know, be, being a kind of a, a weird, brainy ADHD mindset, it's like, OK, my carrots live here and this is where the knife goes and my onion sits here. And, you know, as soon as they, they're in and... So they, they've all got these little stools that they drag around so they can get up high. And as soon as I can hear a stool being dragged into the kitchen i'm just no get out uh but there's you know there are some bits that i have to just grin and just let them yeah, will yeah. you stir this darling you know and it's, yeah. would you stir this just, wrong for daddy just put this water into the toilet um, and you mentioned being neurodiverse there but like you're really neurodiverse but you weren't diagnosed to what 47 <laughs> yeah yeah and was there, uh, was there a I crisis? This... Did something happen at 47? Yeah, yeah, there was a crisis and uh, I had to kind of be have rafts of mental tests for a long time and and they said, OK, so you've got these things. And I've read this a lot, actually, people who get diagnosed later on, they're like, ah. But it was like, oh, I see. Ah, uh, that explains me eating the same lunch every day for 30 years. And, you know, it... I, I really, but but you know that said, I've lived my whole life like this, so and and functioning, not just functioning at a pretty high level. I yeah. mean, you know, well, it's diff- It's weird because there is highs, but then it's also, yeah, I'm on a sofa for two months with a blanket on my head. Okay. You know, it's, we don't it, see that. Bit. No, yeah. it's it's those kind of it's that you know, but it's um, you know, I tried to medicate for a while too, but it was it was just too much. It wasn't right for me, and I kind of figured that. I had done it for 47 years, so maybe the fact that even now sitting here I'm thinking of 50 other things, it, it it's all right, you know, I, I'm all right with it. You can do it. I, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was weird when I when I medicated, it was weird when it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't there, you know. It was like walking into a big empty hangar and saying, hello, hello, oh, hello. Oh, actually, I haven't thought about that. That must be so weird if it stops. It was just... I didn't like the, the silence, you know. Yeah, I guess after 47 years, it would be hard to just kind of go, yeah, oh. Where is everyone, <laughs> guys? 
<laughs> Alan? Well, I think particularly for creative people, because you kind of think, well, hang on, being that way made, you know, I was able yeah. to create all this amazing stuff. Yeah. I think I hear this a lot too, that people think ADHD is like some kind of superpower. And uh, I, I think, I, I get it. I understand why you'd say that, but it's yeah. also, uh, you know, crushingly painful if... if if it isn't, if you're, if you're not that, uh, that doing that at that point, if you know what I mean. But also because your brain is that wired that way, do you think that also explains the comfort you find in cooking? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, even just peeling vegetables and then slicing them. I mean, sometimes I do that when I'm not even cooking. <laughs> if my brain's in a certain way, I'm like, I'm now going to finely dice eight carrots. Wow. And I'll just sit and I'll finally dice eight carrots. And uh, and then you, like, ten minutes, you stand up and you're like, right, good, all right, all right, what are we doing? You know, and then you can get on with it. And you, I mean, it's interesting that you love cooking, but you, you only cooked in restaurants for a little bit. Yeah, for about two years. Well, um, quite a long time, yeah. And they let me do, you know, that's where I started to learn how to use a knife and then you kind of go up and I ended up on the broiler, which is, like, essentially... If you can imagine a massive barbecue, but inside a building. And was this uh, all Chiquitos? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I loved it. I loved I mean, that, again, that taps into that kind of mayhem of that need for mayhem that ADHD gives me. And, you know, suddenly on a Saturday night, you have a little ticket machine. And whenever anyone orders something, the ticket machine makes this noise. And so it, you would just hear that just constantly. Wow. And that meant you had to put on some chicken or a bit of steak or some ribs. or uh, I, I loved it. I loved doing it. Uh, uh, Stephen Graham's thing, Boiling Point tonight. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I would say don't watch it. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I found it so stressful because I worked in restaurants for years. Just people screaming. It. It's very stressful. There's yeah. just a lot of like things going wrong in a kitchen. Uh, just, yes. You know? And there is... Because I I think we're kind of... I'm, I think I'm older than you, but we're kind of of a similar age. Yeah. There's a weird thing where... Uh, Bits of our childhood seem so kind of Dickensian. And yes. just like, well, wow, well, that was that happened in my lifetime. There's a story you tell in, in the book about custard, which is so traumatic and yeah. awful. Uh, do you mind telling us? No, that not at all. Uh, when I went to school, it was lunchtime, and I, I'm guessing, uh, I think I was probably a ten, maybe. Ooh. And I was there hanging out with my mates. We went and we got dessert, which was jam, roly poly, and custard. And to make them laugh, I got like three bits, three portions. Um, and I sat and I ate part of one, and then I was just full. And then one of the kind of teachers came around and said, "What? What are you doing? Why, what have you done here? Why aren't you eating this?" I was like, "Oh, sorry, I'm just full, and I was making." And then he said, essentially. You're now going to sit here until you finish it all. Um, and that that was at like half past 12 in the afternoon. And it became just a horrible war of attrition. And I was still there at, at four o'clock in the afternoon, having not wanting to move. And, you know, they cleared dinner around me. Oh. And, and he just sat there opposite me. And I just sat there and refusing to eat it. Uh, and then... Then my mum kicked the doors in of the, of the, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> came in and uh, saved me. She was very fearsome. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was, like, foul. She was effing and blinding and she grabbed... Like, she was then mad at me for some reason. Uh, but, yeah, I got hauled out by my elbows and it was, it was a real thing. But I think it's absolutely put me off custard and teachers. Yeah, well, uh, teachers, like, what was going on in that man's head that he it's... was having a war with a 10-year-old about custard? <laughs> yeah, well, so what, have you got Have you got nothing better to do? <laughs> Haven't you got a class to teach? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm 10. <laughs> I've got <Yeah>. time. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was bad. And I think I say in the book, too, I think if a, if someone did that to one of my kids, or a kid, it's like, what are you getting out yeah. of this? It's Hopefully weird. Hopefully that doesn't go on anymore. I hope not. Yeah, we, we think not. We think not. And your mom, I mean, you're, you, you write really beautifully about your mother because there's a sort of bittersweet entry to yeah. cooking for you. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, my mum my, my mom was a, a terrible alcoholic and we have a terrible... I mean, we had a really tough time and the older I got, the more I kind of hated her um, because I didn't get it. I didn't understand why you would choose that over me, you know? Yeah. Um, and then when my mum died, then it's like, oh, 
Okay, n now I can't even tell you how I feel. So I think I spent a lot of time in my 30s and 40s just just utterly resenting that and, and that loss and that tragedy and not being able to do anything about it until I reached a point in my life where I was suddenly like, oh, okay, now I completely understand why you would do what you did. Yeah. And, and it was only through that and, and through the book and through the writing of these books that I... I found just a hundred percent forgiveness for her, for for her, you know, and through knowing what addiction is and knowing what addiction can do, and 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 it, that wasn't her. That wasn't who she was as a woman or, or a mother. She she was made to do that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And also that some of your lovely memories of of her are in food. It's and, cooking. Yeah. yeah, that was part of it too. Yeah. It's like you know, I'd like my kids to remember these bits of my mum, not just. The, the the bits I remember, you know, yeah. she was an amazing, funny, charming, passionate, fiery, funny woman, you know. So she was all those things. And, and I think, you know, through these books, my kids will have the chance to look at that and think, oh, she, you know, she was this, but she's also that. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah.